Welcome to Christy's Cropping and Creating. I am Christy Bolin. I'm a Creative Memories Advisor in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and I'm actually going to be airing this a day earlier than I normally do. And the reason is Creative Memories had a new launch this week that started on Monday, November 4th at noon central and it ends on well <laughs> the launch does not end unless something runs out but we have some things that are available if you purchase by friday at noon central time it's a free pack of artsy add-ons that is a combination of some fun embellishments and things to go with different collections that we have. I do have on my iPad the a picture of some of the ones that are available. So if you get three artsy add-on packs, you get to choose one of four different ones that are exclusive like for the free the free ones are exclusive four different ones and so this ends at noon on Friday so I wanted to give you time to go ahead and get an order in before this special ends also let me find this this is also something that is potentially going to be available if it does not sell out, it's it's for advisors only to purchase, which is one of the advantages of being an advisor is you get early access to some things and um, some things that are limited, advisors get to buy these things first. So this is called Document the Days or excuse me, the December Days Kit. And in this kit, there are some stickers, there are an 80 pound weight sheet of tags. There's gonna be some ribbon, some embellishments, this beautiful red shimmer pen. So an advisor can get this for you on Thursday if there are still some available. So if you do not have an advisor, please reach out to me and let me help you try to get one of these for you. You can place an order for the other things, um, the artsy add-ons and the other things that I'm going to show you, you can place that order on my website. That's creativememories.com slash user slash Christy Bolin. And if you need me to try to order the December days kit for you on Thursday, I need to know by Wednesday night if you want me to try to order that for you. Um, again, thank you for watching Christy's Cropping and Creating. And I'm going to be creating a layout in just a moment. It is a page kit that I'm turning into a very quick, fun, versatile project recipe. And if you would like to attend any of my weekly classes that I teach to a private group, email me at christybolin at gmail.com. My name is spelled K-R-I-S-T-I-B-O-L-I-N. You need to know that for the end of my website address too. But when you email me, ask me about Christy's Cropper subscription group. The classes are taped. And so if you can't watch it live, you can always go back and watch it. <clears throat> and I would love to have you as part of that group. Um, some of the other things that are new this week are a mittens and flurries border maker cartridge. Most people love, love, love our border maker system because you can get different cartridges and create so many different types of borders and embellishments and accents for your pages. We also have the Snow Pals border punch. It is a standalone border punch that allows you to make these really cute snowmen. Um, I'm going to call the one with the hat the man, snowman, and then the snow woman. But of course, it, it could be the, the snow dad and the snow kid or whatever. <laughs> the new collection is called Flurry of Fun. 
and it is a wonderful, beautiful collection, especially for those of you that live in the cold climates, and if you like to snow ski, um, ice fishing, the, um, oh, what do you call those things? It's like an ATV, but you, you go out riding around. I, I can't even remember what it's called right now, but whatever that thing's called, there's one right there, whatever it's called. Again, like snowmobiling, maybe. Maybe that's what it's called. Obviously, I've never done it. And since I live in South Carolina, we certainly don't get to do that. <laughs> but it has, the collection has a very pretty blue album with two or three different colors of trees on it. Uh, the paper pack is, um, oops, the paper pack is not, um, very strongly represented here but here are what some of the papers look like of course it does have mats and all kinds of things that will just make your winter pages stand out and I think you're going to love it and for those of you that have been doing the simple page kit each month the new page kit for December, which is number 12, uh, simple page kit number 12 it, for the This Life collection. It looks like this, and it's, ooh, sorry, I didn't mean to go off screen. It's going to be really fun for some of your December pages, whether it's baking or wrapping presents or opening presents or whatever it might be. I think you're really, really, really going to love the simple page kit. And lots of people have been catching on to how wonderful these kits are because they've been selling out pretty fast. So if you do want one, please be sure to put it in your order or reach out to an advisor about getting one before they sell out. And the new advisor join gift it's well it's it's not brand brand new because it's been out for a little over a month now but it is this wonderful tote to help you organize your uh, power project folders and my goodness I just forgot the name of this thing again I think it's called the power project tote and it comes in this really cute rainbow dots print like our other things that we've been getting this year and um, so you're going to want to reach out about joining my team. I do have a special for those of you that join my team and reach level two. I have a really, really, really nice bonus for you. So be sure to let me know if it's something that you're at all interested in. Uh, being a Creative Memories Advisor is not significantly different than having a membership to Sam's or Costco because once you join there are no monthly or even yearly minimums and you will automatically get a uh, commission on all the orders that you place. So don't forget to reach out to me if you want more information on the bonus for joining my team and reaching level two. All right now I am going to get us started on our page layout. Let me show you this. We're going to take a sheet of paper that comes like in one of those simple page kits. It It is set up like this initially. Now, because there are two or three different colors on the other side of this page, it works for the layout that it allowed us to create. This is the layout. <clears throat> so, I'm going to cut one sheet of paper to make the layout. And then if I don't, if I'm not completely happy with what would turn out once I make these cuts because of it being the same color, then I do have an extra sheet of cardstock. But I just wanted to show you how you can really easily take a simple page kit, the recipe that comes with it, and cut your own paper, the papers that you pick and turn it into a great layout. So this was the sample, and this is simple page kit number 11. Obviously, it does have a Thanksgiving theme, and I've just got my photo holders here. I don't actually have my photos on yet. I still have, y'all, a ton of stickers left over 
that I can use on this layout. Look at all that. I mean, it's just wonderful how many stickers come with each of the simple page kits. But until I get my photos on, I'm not going to go back and add the extra stickers. I just put the pumpkins along the bottom and the give thanks because I definitely will be using this as a, as a Thanksgiving page. Now, I did end up choosing papers that I can use, again, for a Thanksgiving layout when I was choosing things, but I could also use these papers for a different fall layout, whether it be um, Halloween or, you know, just getting up leaves in the yard or whatever it might be. So I'm going to use this pumpkin paper. This is from Full Moon Fun. I'm going to use this striped paper. So it's going to be interesting to see how this turns out. The striped paper is going to be where you see this orange right here. And I do need two sheets of it because both of the pieces are eight by eight and a half. So one piece of paper would not be big enough to cover that same, that same space. These pumpkins are going to be over here where the orange is. This avocado cardstock is one of the sheets that I was considering to be my cut apart page, which I showed you the picture of just a moment ago. Let me pull that back over. So I'm either going to use the avocado or the canary cardstock to cut apart. But again, for this cut apart page, it was in um, at least, oh, it was in three colors. So this, this burgundy piece at the bottom came from that. This yellow piece across the top came from that. And the brown that's under these photos, photo holders, that was all from the cut apart page. So since that's three colors, I'm just not real sure if I'm going to be happy with it just being green or with I'm just or with it just being canary. So I have both out and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. My base pages are going to be this tonal color here. And the tonal here and the stripe here are from a collection that is already, I believe, three years old. Hello Autumn was the name of the collection. So you can mix and match collections and, you know, just make things your own. And that's what I want you to see that you can do by... Um, by just taking your own paper, taking the recipe from a simple page kit or other project recipe and diving in that way. All right, I'm going to get my mats out and get ready to go here. I do have written on some post-it notes, the measurements, and I'm going to try to remember to pull those measurements back and forth so that you can see what we need to be cutting. The problem is I didn't cut them. I didn't write them on a post-it note by itself. So hopefully it's not going to be confusing to you. Um, okay, so my paper, I do want to use it with the stripe going vertical. So my first cut is the width, and that is going to be at eight inches. So I can make this with my stripes still being vertical. Oh, you know what? And I can do this too at the same time. Um, da, 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 da. Let me think for just a second. All right, where is, yeah, okay. Okay, I was trying to decide did I wanna turn my papers opposite directions, but it's not gonna matter for this particular layout. But I'm gonna cut this at the same time, two papers at the same time and just remember that when you're um, pressing down that you might need to press a little bit harder. So this is at eight inches. This is gonna be the paper that will go underneath the photo mat layout. And then now I'm gonna turn it so that the, um, that was the width, so that the length is eight and a half inches. So my first square, it's not a square, it's a rectangle, <laughs> is eight by eight and a half. So this next cut will be at 
eight and a half inches and I now have my rectangles ready to go to lay down on those pages like that um and that's I'm not really showing you yet because I didn't pull my base pages back over here all right so I mentioned to you that the pumpkin paper was going to go where on that sample there was a just a solid color orange and that is only three inches wide so I'll make this cut at three inches and it's also going to be eight and a half inches long, but I'm gonna cut my second one at three inches and then I will stack those and cut them at the same time going uh, for, the, for the length of it. So that was just now the width. This six by 12 piece is left over for another project. I'll put it in my pile that I can use um, later, but this piece will be three by eight and a half. Maybe if I do it that way, it, it'll be a little bit easier. So the first one was eight by eight and a half. This one is going to be three by eight and a half. So I've already cut the three. I've got them stacked together. <laughs> I can't get it to stay. Oh, so much for that. <laughs> so I've got them stacked together and I'll put this down here at the eight and a half and I will cut this off. This can be used on a different layout. I'll put that in my pile. So I now have my three inch by eight and a half inch pieces. They're gonna go on either side of my first rectangle Maybe if I slide over like this, this will work. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And then now that's the only thing that we needed to cut from different paper. The next cut that we're gonna make would be like from that cut apart, cut apart page. So I'm gonna cut it first with I'm just trying to decide, do I want to cut it with avocado or do I want to cut it with canary? I am going to cut this avocado sheet and it is going to be, my first cut is half inch, one half inch. And I'm actually going to make two of those. And you do need to make this cut before you do anything else to mimic your cut apart page. And here's why. This is the full 12 inches, but the others are less than that. So that was a half inch by 12 inches. And I needed two of them, one for the left page and one for the right page, okay? So then, the next cuts we're going to make, all of those are less than um, 12 inches wide. So, or yeah, 12 inches long. So now this paper is 11 inches. And guess what? My next one needs to be 11 inches. So this first cut is not something that you're going to be incredibly familiar with. It is seven eighths. So, the seven eighths, I can look at my, oops, that's off camera. I can look at my cheat here that I got from attending Creative Memories, uh, no, not Creative Memories, Creative Cafe International. I have a little cheat thing here that, that I have stuck to my trimmer that helps me know where the seven eighths is. So seven eighths is going to be the long click after the three quarter inch mark. So you've got the little clicks that are the 16ths and the shorter clicks are, I, wait a minute, I said that backwards. The sh little bitty short clicks, tick marks are the 16th in of an inch marks. And the longer ones are the eighth of an inch marks. And then the really long ones are the quarter, half and three quarters. So if I go to the long click past the three quarter, 
Let me see if I can point it to you this way. My trimmer is too big for this um, setup. Okay, so I'm gonna use it over here on the right-hand side. There's the half inch. Then the next long one is three quarters. And the, the long one after that, let me close it. The long one after that would be this one. So it'll be two little tick marks before the one inch. But again, it's going to be the long tick mark after the three quarters. Hopefully that, that shows you where the seven eighths is. If it's really... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If that's too confusing for you to try to figure out where your seven eighths is, oh, well, first of all, I can help you get <laughs> one of these cheat things to put on your trimmer. So just reach out to me if you need to get one of those. I did buy some that I can uh, sell to you, and I'm happy to do that. But also, if it's, if it's, too hard to try to figure out just make it at three quarters of an inch and your layout will look slightly different and then you're also going to have some extra paper since we are trying to use these as um oh i'm supposed to turn this wait one second since we're supposed to just be using this piece of paper for our cut apart to finish enhan enhancing the page. So if you cut it at three quarters of an inch, you're gonna have some left over and you don't wanna do that, but you could make it work. All right, now I cut half of an inch off of this 12 inch side and my next pieces need to be 11 inches. So I'm gonna rotate this horizontally and that's where I'm gonna make my seven eighths cut. So it's gonna be seven eighths by 11 instead of seven eighths by 12. Okay, so there's my first seven eighths. It will go up along the top. I will make my next cut at seven eighths by 11. It's gonna go along the top of the right hand page. And then <clears throat> my next cut, this should be 10 and um, wait, 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 let me see which direction it's going to be 10 and a quarter. One of these directions is going to be 10 and a quarter, and I don't remember which one. That one is still 11. Okay, here it is. So, oh, let's see. Yeah, so to now I have 10 and a quarter inches left going this way, and I need to make my first cut at five and a half inches. So go back to this direction, rotate it back to be being vertical, and make your cut at five and a half. And before I make that cut, oh no, see that's, yeah, 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 that, that is 10 and a quarter. Okay, before I make my five and a half inch cut, I'm gonna double check that my length is 10 and a quarter. So remember, it's that same piece of paper. I'm probably not making this very clear, and I apologize. I, I'd forgotten that I needed to make note of how I needed to rotate and, <laughs> and all of that. But this is five and a half inches wide by 10 and a quarter inches long. It's actually the piece, if I'm not mistaken, that's going to go over here on my left-hand page and it's gonna hold my photos. So it, it will be a photo, it will be the mat for three different photos. All right, this piece is still 10 and a quarter. And let me go back to that picture so I can tell you how we need to rotate now. All right, so I'm still gonna have it going this way, the, the, the length vertical. And I'm going to make another cut at five and a half. And actually, it that five and a half means that it is um, it is the entire the entire piece. So this first piece that's going to be a photo holder for the other side needs to be six and three quarters. So so that piece, I thought I was going to make one more cut, but I'm not. Now I'm going to rotate it horizontal again 
So I've already got this side that is five and a half, and then this just needs to be six and three quarters. It is gonna hold two photos over here on the right-hand page. And then this piece, I believe is three and a half inches wide and it's already five and a half inches long. So I don't have to make any adjustments on it either once I cut off the big piece. So that will end up going there like that. All right, now we can move to start adhering. All right, so I'm gonna show you this cut apart page one more time. You're gonna make your half inch by 12 inch cuts along one side of your paper. You're gonna turn it to make cut number three and four, which were seven eighths by 11. You will cut from, from what's left over then, you're gonna turn it back vertical. So, so the first two are vertical, the second two are along the horizontal. The next cut, which would be cut number, or for piece number five, is going to go back, let's see, vertical, and you will cut it at five and a half inches, and at that point, you would have ten and a quarter left over, so you don't have to make a cut for the length, you only have to make a cut for the width, which is five and a half. Paper number six is already going to be five and a half inches wide, because it was half of what's left over from for piece five and six, or, you know, it was one big piece. So if you make a five and a half inch cut, you're left with five and a half inches. And then you just need to shorten piece number six to six and three quarters. So the first one's five and a half by 10 and a quarter. The next one's five and a half by six and three quarters. And when you cut that next piece at six and three quarters, you're going to be left with piece number seven, which will measure five and a half inches wide, and it's three and a half inches uh, tall. <laughs> so six and three quarters plus three and a half equals ten and a quarter. So hopefully you um, follow that a little bit better now that I'm trying to show you. And if you have any questions on it, do not hesitate to reach out and ask me, what was I talking about? Okay. Um, all right. Now, here are my background papers. And literally, the only thing I have to do is adhere this in the way the formula was written. And if I can get my fingernails to cooperate here. So let me just put this on top of this. And remember me saying that I may end up wanting to make one of these pieces that I cut from the avocado cardstock. I may end up wanting to turn one of them into canary. So I just need to make that decision. Otherwise, I am good to go. That is a lot of green between the not the background paper, but the the striped paper. And I do think that canary could come in well in um, uh, pulling out some of the orange and the pumpkins, which I know orange is not canary, <laughs> but still that could help me with that. Also, the stickers I'm going to use for this one, I was trying to decide, did I want to use the leaves or did I want to use always something to be thankful for? If I use always something to be thankful for, it absolutely doesn't matter. And for that matter, even if I use the leaves on the avocado, that's not going to matter. So it's, so it's really just, do I want another color introduced or not? And I think, oh, I'm so undecided. And that's the problem with me is sometimes I have a really hard time deciding these things. I like the continuity of the colors being the same between the top, the middle, and the bottom. So I believe I'm just going to leave it. And then that way I'm only using that one sheet of cardstock instead of having to cut into another one. Okay, so I decided to leave it. And now I just need to start adhering. So when you do the simple page kit, this piece is already printed on your 
on your uh, background. So in my case, I'm going to need to adhere it. But if you're completing the simple page kit, you won't have this piece to adhere. And I am going to start by going, I'm going to put my paper on my 13 inch mat. I'm going to center it in there. And it should be that it is I believe it was two inches from the top. <clears throat> Let me measure real quick to make sure that it's supposed to be two inches from the top. So that means I'll come down to the two on my mat and I'm gonna also go all the way to this inside edge of my background paper. So two inches from the top and then all the way to the inside edge. And then my pumpkin piece is gonna go along on the outside of it. And then the tr this trim piece goes along the top edge. I flipped that cardstock that didn't matter if I flipped it or not. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny that I do that all the time. So just follow along the edge, the top edge of your papers, and also come to this edge right here. This piece, however, will go the full width of the page. I almost flipped it again, but I caught myself and then I changed my mind. <laughs> so as long as you start on the inside edge, that, that's probably the better place to start. Follow along the bottom of your rectangle, your striped rectangle, and that's fixed. I'll come back to do this photo mat in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these pieces. Again, I will put it on my 12 inch, excuse me, my 13 inch mat. And if I come down two inches on this inside edge, that's at the 10, but you can also make sure from your left page to your right page that that's gonna meet up. So if I didn't wanna do it like centered inside my 13 inch mat, I could come over here like this to make sure that it's gonna meet up. And that's just for continuity from the left page to the right page. Again, adhere right along the edge of that, of the striped paper. Take my trim piece from the top. It does not go the full width of the page, but I'm gonna start on that inside edge. My bottom piece does go along the entire bottom. And it's because it's, well, <laughs> it's because whoever the designer is wrote it this way, but it's also because you can, it will be the, the anchor for your sticker or border strip that you create from either a border punch or the border maker cartridge. Of course, stickers are super, super easy, but it's also wonderful that you can make your own embellishments with our different border punches. All right, so here will be my photo mat holder. And on the recipe, let me pull the sample out. It also comes to this inside edge. So pull, not pull, but place it. Oh, and also um, we're gonna, we're gonna be splitting the difference. Okay, that's, so how far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half inches. Um, well, just, <laughs> I can't, I can't um, do the math fast enough, but I think if I come two and a half from the top, no, that would be one and a half. 
All right, so you need to go about one and a quarter from the top and one and a quarter from the bottom. Yeah, that is eight and a half. So that will be the middle for the left hand one. This right hand one, however, is a horizontal photo mat. So it's gonna be holding pictures the other way. So it's gonna be positioned just above the top, um, probably at, let's see, that would be like two and three quarters down to the nine and a half. I think is how that would be half of that distance. Yeah, that looks that looks like it's about half. So come two and three quarters from the top and um and then down here at the bottom that ends up at nine and nine and a half inches from the bottom is where the bottom of that goes. And then this one is gonna be a vertical mat again. And it, again, is going to split the difference of this mat beside it. So it will go like this. I'm just not even going to measure. I'm just going to eyeball it. And I've got about the same distance here as I do here. And stick that down. Then the last thing we need to do, well, it's not really the last thing, <laughs> but I'm going to show you the placement. So this is for three three by five photos that will perfectly mat onto this left-hand page. Obviously, if you don't like these measurements, adjust it so that you can put bigger pictures. I personally would like three and a half by five and a half inch photos, but I wanted to show you how to completely mimic the, um, the project recipe from the simple page kit so that's why i did not monkey with the adjustments this one is to hold five by three again i would rather it be five and a half by three and a half but again i wanted to show you exact so i just left it like this so you're still getting six photos on the page you've still got room to put a journaling box somewhere you've got room for a title you've got room for border embellishments along the bottom I'm going to go ahead and put this always be thankful and on the recipe it's it's supposed to like slightly sit on top of your um, strip down here but if you want to make it higher or lower you certainly can. I'm actually bringing mine just a touch lower and you know if I were doing one that that were scalloped like this is, you know, meaning that it's it's not just straight across, or for that matter, if I was doing a laser cut border that had some holes in it, then it could be neat because it would show the color underneath. But anyway, I chose not to do that for this, so it's kind of a mute point since I'm not physically showing you, but I did want you to see how good this looks by adding your sticker strip along the bottom. I didn't pull out any other like word things to go up here. So I'm I'm not gonna show you with this one um, being finished that way, but I will pull this one back over and show you that I have a word up here. Obviously, if I wanted to use one of my photo holders as a journaling box, I certainly could do that. But this is the sample from the simple page kit. This is my mock, <laughs> my um, uh, replicating it with my own papers. I'm still using it as a fall layout. I'll, I'll adhere this before I take photos to, to show y'all with this video, but I don't wanna keep you right now. So hopefully you, you see how easy it is to replicate something with your own papers and you will give it a try. Don't forget to, don't hesitate to reach out to me if I can help you in any way. Christy Bolin at gmail.com, K-R-I-S-T-I-B-O-L-I-N is how you spell my name. If you need to place an order, I'm 
happy to help you, but obviously I want you to support your own advisor if you already have one. But my website, creativememories.com slash user slash K-R-I-S-T-I-B-O-L-I-N. Again, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, thumbs up on my video. <laughs> thank you for commenting. All those things help me to reach more people and continue to do these videos. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Don't forget those deadlines for ordering. And happy cropping. Hopefully I'll see you next week. Happy cropping.